I'm currently working on an EP featuring some of my compositions over the years. I'm expecting to explore my identity as an artist even more and exploring what I like and don't like in production, really getting in touch with my own sound. I've been inspired by the aim of the 696 residency to champion artists from the museum's own home area. When there's a scene going on in an area, organisations, press and media companies always jump on the hype and quite often present a false, watered-down image of what's really going on, or they highlight a small amount of artists that don't represent the full scene, or artists who are not originally from these areas, but have developed a look that matches the scene. With the 696 project, you've got real authentic artists actually from South London doing their thing. I also love the handling collection as there are many opportunities to use them. I've had fun sampling a couple of these instruments so far and manipulating the sounds for use in production. to do to create a project called No Ball Games. What No Ball Games is, just the different social elements to growing up in a working class environment in, in a city, London. We're trying to think about the musicality of it, which is still one of the reasons why we chose to like go for the ornament, because we wanted to make the project not just samples from YouTube and then having to clear them. We wanted to create samples, like the piano elements into it, um, the drums, the snares, all of those things is, is what we're, we're, we're trying to aim to do with this next project. So we could kind of create a base of what we want it, want it to be and the direction that we want to do. Um, and then I wanted to hash something out this summer, but like with COVID and everything else, we wasn't able to get the time and energy we wanted to put into it. So we said, hang on a second, let's build the research for what no ball games could look like. Um, and just kind of bring it to life now. So at the moment, we're just building up the research and saying, let's not rush it, but let's take time. This time and space has allowed us to do is not respond to what we think the market needs, but just bring everything with a higher quality. <laughs> it's it's going to be something like, in my head, it's theatrical, it's, it's massive. The instruments that excite me the most at the moment are actually the keyboard instruments, specifically the harpsichord and the organ. I'm so excited to really delve into these instruments and explore all of the different sounds they can create. I love classical music outside of gospel and jazz. It was um, one of the first genres that I really explored. And I fell in love with a lot of Purcell and Purcell uses a lot of harpsichord. So it's a sound I'm really, really familiar with, but I'd love to incorporate it within my music more and just explore the instrument and see what else I can attempt to do with it outside of what I already know and have done. So I guess the main bulk of the project that I'll be working on within my residency is sampling to explore this instrument and see how I could incorporate it within my own music and also because essentially these instruments are within a museum collection, it just means that I guess this digitalization will mean that they will be accessible and people will be able to use them. Maybe not in the sense that they were created for initially, but it means they will have an extended life and their life will live on. So I love percussion, I'm, I'm a rhythm person, I just love rhythm, I love pockets and Afro sounds, Afro diasporic sounds, Afro diasporic topics <laughs> and feelings and emotions and uh, that's what I focus on um, in, in my own artistry. Just the idea that I have so much access to so many different types of instruments at the moment, even, even Afro instruments that I never really knew about or heard of or um, thought about playing before are now very accessible. Um, the tablas in particular, 
the Ood in particular, the Cole. I've also enjoyed playing with the xylophone a bit. Um, I might have to <laughs> reborrow that one <laughs> and, and, and get some more work in with it. I kind of create for live. I've been touring for a few years with a few different bands. I think that expands like my artistic thought, like what I think can, what I think is achievable already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's one of the ways that the Hornum has definitely, you know, changed the way that I make music already. The instruments that excite me are the instruments that originate from Africa, specifically the drum, the djembe, the talking drum, the textures and the tones. Um, that's what excites me about, about those instruments and also the lineage and how you can connect ancestrally um, using these instruments and I find that fascinating. The more time I spend on the subject, um, I, I understand deeper that rhythm is a sacred natural law like geometry and um, there's a science to it. It's a metaphysical language that exists within all that exists, vibration, and, and that is uh, majorly inspiring to me. Before I came to the museum, my practice was focused um, on performance, live performance and recording music. Um, and the way that I make music and make art has shifted since being on the muse museum's residency. Um, it's expanded my methodology and creative approach, um, tapping into different creative mediums to express myself using film, visual art as well, um, in a different way to how I did before. Um, it's more a storytelling type of approach, uh, which has been really fun to embark on so far and uh, I'm looking forward to the output.